if I'm honest, yeah, I feel like shit. Can I, can I swear? Yeah, uh, fuck it. I feel, I feel like shit. Um, yeah, Wayne's in, Wayne's in, Wayne's in, I can't even talk properly. Wayne's are in tom uh, tomorrow. Um, so I've got another three kilos to go. I haven't eaten all day. So basically approach with caution. You know, um, I've, I've water loaded, I've cut the carbs out, I've, you know what I mean? I've, I've not eaten after six. I've, I've done all the things I need to do to get my body ready. And right now I'm tired. I'm hungry. Sweatsuit, hoodie, t shirt, thermals, and. Get me? Don't lose count. Jeez! But yeah, man, like, when I come out of fight night, you're gonna know what's going on. You're gonna know the business. Bag and tags here all day long. Bag and tag season. Hashtag, still bagging and tagging. MrBagandTag.com. Holla! Back in time, bitch. Yeah. Uh, all to sweat those those kilos out, dehydrate my body, you know. So uh, yeah, it's not pleasant, but it's, it's it's part of the job, you know. To be honest, I don't even know his name. Change of opponent. It's changed twice now. I uh, can't keep up. Um, so uh, I don't know. The results gonna be the same. The results gonna be the same. You know, first round finish. I mean, it, it, it's the sport that we're in. You know, injuries happen. You train hard. You know, for a fight. You know, injuries gonna happen. So I, it, it's not a surprise that uh, uh, you know that an opponent will pull out, but twice in a week it's just annoying you know it does switch my game plan up first one was a grappler all right so i'll strike the other one was a bit of an all-rounder his striking wasn't as good as mine i'll strike now i've got a striker so i'm gonna go to the ground do you know what i mean and it's annoying but at the end of the day it's not fury's fault fury of family and opponent so it's the best to have a bad situation i've sold tickets i've trained and i've got down to the weight so i've got to fight Yes, Kaminsky, I know you pulled out of the fight, but you're saying that you want, to, you want me to get the belt, which I will, thank you very much for your support. But you're saying, me to get the belt so you can challenge me. I'll tell you something, yeah? I'm going to give you a 20% gift voucher for dreams, so you can get a nice, a nice blanket and a nice pillow, because I'm going to put you to sleep. Well, Danny One Pole, you're stepping up. Yeah, stepping up to two pole. Danny One Punch to two punch.
today weighing day means that we meet all the fighters, they are weighing in to ensure that they make weight for the fight. We record that, we put together a spreadsheet so that we know their name, their fight name, I ask them what club they're from, um, who they're representing, who they're bringing along tomorrow to corner, so I've got all the names down so that tomorrow is all organised, I know exactly who to expect. In terms of venue policy, we obviously have to be mindful of who we let in prior to the doors opening. Uh, we asked them to read through the terms and conditions of the contract. They had the tickets that they've been sent out prior, so then we send them over to Steve to go through all of that paperwork. Then um, we have to look at the fight order. So a lot of people will come in and say, what, what time am I fighting? Until everybody weighs in, we can't actually give that information out because still there could be people that don't make weight or dropping out. So after all of the weigh-ins, we then put together the fight card in order of um, their level of experience pretty much so being a professional mixed martial arts card we have them headlining we've got title fights then we look at what um, what clubs they're from so that we can group them in order that they're not fighting one after another obviously they need to have their own corner men there so if one fighter is representing the same club they can't be rolling together because obviously after the fir after the first fighter they need to have a little bit of debrief cool down and then the same camp will need to warm up the next fighter so we have to look at changing rooms making sure that the camps are all together also the fight card today we also have access to the venue so we can put up the cage tables and chairs get a little bit of orientation about the building uh, direct people um, well, make people aware of where we are so that the fighters can turn up on time tomorrow so they're not panicking, so they're not turning up late. Then we advise them and inform them of tomorrow's schedule so that they'll be here in, term, in time for the rules check and the, um, the paramedic checks. And then they're pretty much good to go. Hello? Yes? Yeah, I'm inside, buddy. Yeah, come. Okay, give me two seconds, I'll come on up to the door for you. Two seconds, I know. Okay, bye bye. You said point five over nine, Go on, mate. <laughs> you could have shaved that off, come on. Don't do none of that shave. Fucking hell. 76 hours too late. I'm done, man. You got it? Ah. Good. Ah. Yeah. Breathing, I managed to lose weight. Losing it. Talking, well, it's gone down, man. So, how much did you drop from yesterday to today? Three kilos. That's what professionals are about, right? 76.5 You don't you lot don't understand what I've been going through. I dropped 11 kg bro. You do it more different man. You know when you look at someone and you go, is that him? Sure that's not the good I'll sign up to buy it tomorrow night man. Nathan bag and tag. And um remind me of what club you fight out of? Combat company. And team titan. And team titan, you want that announced, yeah. Um, have you weighed in with Dan? Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, have you got your tickets on you? Yeah, I'll do that with yes. my man. Um, are you okay to be here for 2.30, 3 o'clock tomorrow? Oh, yeah, yeah, tomorrow, yeah. Lovely. That's you all sorted, thank Cheers. you. Who's next? Okay. Yeah, I'll go my payphone. Have a fight. Yeah, I'm going to pay for I'll tell you what I'll pay for. Yeah. 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 Let me pay for another two. I owe you for 15 tickets. I've got them 15 in the car. I'm ready to be sold. And I owe you the two of the sponsorships. So 15 the sponsorship, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Perfect, thank you. Fuck off. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
issues have you had? Uh, in all fairness, no major issues. The weather's not really our friend. It's fury in the sun, but I'm sure we'll be alright. I've got it on good, uh, good authority, it's not going to rain tomorrow. I've been, uh, I've been using bring, the secret. The fights will bring the sun to no, no, Of course I can. Steve Durant like to work out. Yeah, he's a big guy to work for. Obviously, so I'm not in well. I just don't mind, but he's quite a big of people. We just work through him on him just for sure. He's quite amicable and he's quite a fair guy, so. And he's relaxed as well, right? So he just lets everyone get on with it. And all this hard work that goes on behind the scenes, and then it all goes into like a few hours. For people that don't know, they just turn up in the day. Everything's set up, it all looks nice. All the fights, hopefully, usually run very smoothly. And, see some good action and see a few knockouts maybe. But now, obviously people that don't know they do all the work that goes into it, they just think, oh, it's just a, a put on an event, get a venue and thing, but it takes months and months of preparation. So you've got final fighters, match fighters, as you can see today was doing a cage, lighting, this, that, tickets. Like, there's so much that goes into it. it it's, to be honest, it feels kind of surreal. Like, because you do interviews like over the internet and like you post that around. But it's slightly different because you're actually the one giving the answers and then they write up in their own words and as such. But to actually, I didn't have a, any idea that I was actually even inside it until yourself even just presented me with it. And it's, it is very overwhelming. Um, I've come here for the weigh-ins for Fury MMA, which is going on tomorrow. Um, I've got quite a few guys from, uh, from Semtex Gym who are fighting. So I'm going to be helping them out and um, also just helping out around Fury, helping Dan and Stephen Dora and about just being a run around really, just making sure things run smoothly, like as they made it run smoothly for me when I was fighting here last time. What time did you start today? 1am. <laughs> no, I was on my phone till 1am, had a couple of dropouts, uh, managed to get a match back up, which is good, it always happens, Everyone, nothing ever goes smoothly, um, at least one or two fights. Um, but touch wood, a couple of people have come through, said they'll fight as well, so yeah. Um, but setting up the cage and getting the cage stuff done, yeah, 8 o'clock we started this morning, so we've come here, the weighing started at 11, so yeah, it's going, it's going alright, it's going smoothly. He balances it so well, um, considering he does, you know, sort of the personal training and he does coaching at different gyms, um, and he, you know, sort of talking to the fighters, and he does the whole Fury side of it. I never feel that I'm lacking him as a partner or as a father or as a family man. And, you know, I support him. I support him in all he does because I know he does it for the love of it and I know he does it to make a better life for all of us. And, you know, he really believes in Fury and him and Steve and Danielle, they all work so, so hard and I respect them for it. And I guess when you respect someone, it's easy to see why they're doing things and, and to love them that bit more, I guess, as well.
My name's Alex Tech Reed. I'm the entrance DJ and the break DJ for the day. Obviously, a lot of the fighters will come with their own entrance music. Um, the ones that don't, um, we've just sort of got to sort of meet them, find out what they're about, uh, what sort of music they like, and how they look, and then we can sort of go through the music that I've got, pick a song, and find a tune that's right for the way that they look and the way that they appear in the ring. Judges, you've got Sam, uh, Sam Amidi, Patrick Jolla, Chris. He's gonna hate me for not knowing his son. Uh, yeah, whatever it is, you can ask him later. And obviously we've got Hussein who's going to be our fourth official picking up the judges' scorecards and doing a tally up. Uh, my name's Ron Frith and today I'm going to be assistant referee to uh, Dan Monavedi. There are no elbows or knees to the head standing. Uh, and there's no elbows or knees to the head on the ground. You can elbow and knee the body, but not the head. Everyone clear with that one? Cool. There are no twisting techniques. That would be heel hooks, can openers, uh, are we okay if they're on a guillotine to go back? And... You can go back, but on the guillotine you can't twist the neck. Okay, so on a standing guillotine you can come up on your toes and lean back to get that pressure on the neck, but you can't, any, any twisting technique will be constituted as a foul. That makes sense to everyone? Yeah. Excellent stuff. Pro rules, do what you've got to do. You've been here before, you know the score. There's 31 fouls in MMA, we'll be looking for those for pro rules. The only one that I would say is, is majorly important is what we call truck driver elbow 12 to 6. that makes sense? Yeah. So you can't go 12 to 6, you can go 6 to 12 if you're on the bottom. I feel good. It's going well. Everything's on time. We set up yesterday, it's a big stress off. The usual crap, people dropped out, silly excuses, but we knew that was going to happen, it always happens. On the whole we've got a lot of fights left, so yeah, I feel good, everything's looking good. The weather is as I planned it all week, as I told everyone it would be all week. Beginning of the week, people said to me, Ah, oh, it's raining on Saturday. No, it's raining on Saturday. I said, No, it's not. Train every day. Cut the day. Man beasted. That's it. What do, what do we expect to see? Knockout, submission. What, what is your game plan? I ain't got one. I'm going there and just see what happens. <laughs> The judges' scorecards are in, and they've scored this bout 
a unanimous decision in favour of your winner, fighting out the red corner, Lucas Switchlears. Let's say some more for his opponent, Harry Bartley. Today, uh, pretty much been signing off everybody that's been pre ordering their tickets, um, collecting tickets, making sure that they're in or out. Um, uh, today, just making sure that the boys are ready, that they've got all the bits and pieces that they need to do in order to set up. Um, today is pretty much an admin day for me to be fair, and then I get to go and have a watch of the fights a little bit later. I've seen my opponent, very nice guy, but that's not going to help him, you know what I mean? Bad, bad intentions all way, bad intentions. I'm going to put it on him. I don't think he's ready for me, man. So you've had two pull out since So what do you do? What do you do about that? Are you gonna try and rematch them beforehand or um, I've tried to rematch and it's kinda of hard isn't it? to to try to get get fighters last minute to come come on board. Um, I've, I've I've told them though even now because some of the guys come down with their camps, you know, they might want to fight. Um, I, you know, to my last minute, even like last event for the same, I found an opponent on the day and he gave it a well matched opponent. We took him full three rounds, you know. So we'll see, we'll, we'll see what happens. But you know, 15, um, 16 fights on the night. Can't complain, man. I'm getting a bit jealous, guys. Marius. Unfortunately, this isn't good news, it's bad news. Marius was meant to be fighting tonight, and his opponent's dropped out very last minute. Thank you. We had a lot of booze for that. What happens now, a lot of people come here, and a lot of people fight with injury, and a lot of people fight with illness. And some people turn around the day before and say, I've got a cold. So Marius, 
from myself, I'm very sorry. I know Dan's very sorry, but well, what's your thoughts on this? Uh, first thing, I want to say sorry for my poor English. Sorry for all my friends, they can't get to support me. They can't touch you, they to support me. And apologies again, because I've come a long way. Unfortunately, this happens. This is the nature of the game. It wouldn't be right if we didn't bring in this other word. Dan is a family man, a very loving man, a very caring man, a little bit soft for an MMA fighter, but I like that dynamic. Um, but Dan's a good guy, he's got a good heart, his heart's in the right place, he's uh, and got a lot of energy and motivation to get up and go, and a lot of drive, so that's important. Testus, how are you feeling today? Feeling good, man. Ready for what? Ready for what? Who's come to see you today? Um, my mum, my dad, and Darren, my junior coach, and his, uh, his missus. What's the experience been like? I mean, what have you thought after seeing you know all of the bouts so far? Um, they've been they've been good fights, good knockouts. Yeah. Hopefully, I get one. As well. So, have you have you seen your opponent today? Yeah. 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 And what would you think? It's not much for me. Like just, a, just a big proof to everybody, people who are watching MMA, about young guys coming, you know, coming through the ranks. My boy Lonnie's going to be fighting. That's just, he's going to be fighting with this kid here, coming in, and 14 years old. I mean, I love, listen, I'll be honest with you, I think if we had that when I was a kid, two of my best friends would still be here today. You know, so it's good that 40 year olds are going in, man. And I'm just saying, like, in a year, I'm where I'm at, you know, possibly go, you know, fighting, fighting in Europe, fighting in Spain, like, yeah, in October. And in, what, well, you're 14, he's got better time to do big things, man. So, I'm saying there's money as well, so, I was saying to you before, just, no matter what happens tonight, just take it as a learning curve and just go in, man. Our youngest ever competitors. Good shit, man. Why not? These two guys are 14 years old. And I've seen a fight before, and it's going to be a battle. This, without further ado, I'm going to welcome into the cage, Festus Ahelu.
Let's make some noise for these boys. Come on. Steve, funny, love it. Do you know what, mate? My friendship uh, side to business side with him is totally different. When business side, we both criticise each other, but then yet we always meet in the middle. We've got he's got ideas, I've got ideas. My ones might be different to his slightly, and then but we always go ahead in the same direction. It's never like oh well, you know, I want to do this, and we're not doing it. So we always find a way to head to that one point. And his friendship, you know, has been the best friend I've ever asked for. Mate. That's that's it. Let's keep it moving. Final fight of the evening. This again is a title fight in the welterweight division. Let's bring in our first fighter, Mateus Nadlundi. Thank <laughs> you. 
Nathan Bag and Tag Jones. And let's make some noise for his opponent, Matthias Nat Lundle. This girl's being presented by our bantamweight chap, Hussein Garibet. This is Max, representative from Studio 338. Max, how did you feel the show went? That was brilliant. Honestly, it's uh, no words for it. It's a pleasure having you guys down here. Um, I mean, it's been the best. We know, you're, of... we know you're an MMA fan in general. Yeah. Um, it's always been a pleasure for me and Steve to come down here, especially with, uh, you know, being the outdoor event of London. Um, just your club's always opened us, you know, welcomed, uh, welcomed us with open arms and you know, I'm, I, I know you've been watching the fights and enjoy the fights as a fan and we just want to say thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you guys, I mean this, this, this is a place for, you know, for parties like this, I mean yeah. this is one of the best shows that we ever had here and many more to come, future, of course, many more to come. Had the opportunity to sponsor Dan and Steve doing their MMA, El Fury. And uh, yeah, jumped at the opportunity. I've known, I've known you from the gym as well. Yeah. Right? From since since, since, since I was 19, then, wasn't I? Yeah, and you know, he's, he's, you know, he's definitely, he's, yeah. he's always supported us. He was going, ah, oh, when's the next show? When's the next show? And yeah, without fantastic. a doubt, he's always been there. I'm telling you, you know, it's, it's good to have support like these guys. Helps us to one, pay for the venue, and, and you know, just the support of having the crowd and support his business and he supports us. You know, it works yeah. both ways. How you feel tonight, Wim? I feel tonight went good. Uh, there was a great crowd. Uh, I looked back, everywhere I looked, it was people, people, people. They all had smiles, they were all enjoying it. Everyone was cheering. The atmosphere was great. There was no problems as ever. The fights were fantastic. The fighters really put it in. The last minutes were just as good as the, the long term. I thought it was brilliant. Everyone else? Go on, Dan. Oh, it was good. So, obviously, I was working at the beginning, but coming out for the last few fights, oh, it smashed it. it absolutely smashed it. For me, personally, I'm not just saying this because you, know, you guys know Festus and Lonnie, fight of the night. Them two showed exactly what it's about. 14 you know, years old. By the time them guys get to 16, 17 and they turn pro, they're going to be wiping the floor with some people, man. Seriously, they show, I mean, a lot of people go, oh, why, why do kids, you know, fight and all that? They trained. We didn't just chuck them in here for, for our entertainment and go, oh, let's put two 14 year olds in here. They actually trained and they enjoyed it. That's the main thing, you know? And yeah, and then again, like you said, with the, with the last minute pullouts. Oi, listen, <laughs> with the last minute pullouts, all the guys who stepped in were good. I'm a bit disappointed that Marius' opponents pulled out, but you know, all the title fights were good. Um, like Steve said, great crowd, man, great crowd. And Mr. MC here, got the crowd going. You know, let's well. get. But hold on, hold <laughs> on, hold on, hold on. He didn't say to get us get furious. I didn't. I actually forgot, and I stepped out of the cage in the last fight, and I slid down. And went, Fuck! And those people looked at me, and I was like, <laughs> So, what's next for Fury MMA? Oh, that'd be telling. Bigger, wouldn't it? bigger, and higher all the time, man. Bigger, like, better. More people, There's more crowd, we see more people, more coverage, but it's all coming. Listen, I tonight, tell you all my tonight, yeah, exactly, you can't tell them which, but tonight we had a lot of the camps going, we want to get our fighters on there again, whether they're not, you know, we're not about getting people on here who are 
really known. Yeah, we like ticket sellers, but we like people who, who will fight. You know, let's be honest, Festus, he might have sold like only five tickets, but the crowd got behind them too, and that's what it's about. They, they'll follow him. Next time they're on the show, oh yeah, them two kids, let's, you know, let's come and follow them, let's watch them fight, and that's what it's about. Yeah, I mean, 14th of September was a good day for me. Got in, got on, got off, got out, got the job done. Can't really complain. Went to plan, bag and tag. The day, whenever you go for a fight, the day is always long. It's a long ass day. The more you fight, the, the bigger you become. The later in the show you, you fight on, uh, the longer the day. It was a long ass day. And I'll tell you what, after I finished my fight, all I wanted to do was go home. You know, I mean, the whole build up of the adrenaline, of the, of the excitement, the nerves, you know, um, thinking of the crowd reaction, what he's gonna do, the change of opponent, all the expectations that get put upon you and the pressure you put on yourself, you know, it, it takes it out of you, it's draining, you know what I mean? So, six weeks of boot camp, you know, getting down to that weight, I was ready to, you know what I mean, get it over and done with and, and go home. Have a nice sleep and a, a chicken shish kebab. I mean, it's good. It's good. Getting your hand raised, I tell you, like, and everyone applauding and saying, "Hey, bag and that, bag and." I tell you what, that feeling is better than sex. You know, well, it depends. Well, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, it's not. It's not. It depends how you're doing it, but it's a good. It's on that. It's on par. It's on par. You know what I mean? Because uh, I'm just digging a hole now, aren't I? Anyway. What was the question? <laughs> uh, at the moment, <laughs> I think right now, Cage Warriors is definitely the leading organisation in the UK. Ultimate Challenge, where it's my stomping ground, where I, where I kind of like made my name and had most of my fights in my career, it's got to be Ultimate Challenge. Easily, um, Bama. Cage Warriors. Shock and awe. I've seen some good stuff from them. Fusion is really, really coming forward, man. Fusion. Um, you've got Made for the Cage up north. Fury. Fury is different. Yeah, yeah, they're like really high standard. Fury. Fury are good though, some of my guys are there. The guys at Fury are doing a great job as well. It's got to be Fury MMA. There's Fury MMA as well. I would like to say Fury. I know, yeah, I would say Fury. We're, we're, we're catching up with these guys, you know. Even though we, even though, you know, we, we, we're, we're not on TV, you know, but we've got a great YouTube fan base. Uh, we've got good sponsorship behind us, and we're making the right noises, you know. We've got, we've got our, not only we've got fighters from them, them three promotions fighting on our show, but also our, our fighters fighting on their show, you know. So we're getting good names on our show, and and, and it's, it's definitely something that I can work in relation with knowing the fighters and getting them on our show and stuff like that. And, and it's a goal for me and Steve to work on. We've been, you know, Fury started three years ago, 2011. You know, early 2011 we started. And, and that's something, you know, you see a lot of promotions who try to rush things. Oh, well, I'm gonna, I want to get a TV deal, I want to get this. And yet there have been other promotions who have been on TV, but they're not random. You know what I mean? Because whether you put all your budget into that or or you put a couple of good events on and you're concentrating on that and, and then all of a sudden you, you've run out of ideas, I don't know. But for us, you know, one step at a time. You know, things, things are going to come with Fury. And I, and I, I know it and Steve knows it. We will be up there with them guys. It's hard work, you know, and I think what people don't see is uh, with Fury, there is, there is, obviously with Danielle who, who helps out with the admin stuff and all the posting and all that. But he started off with just me and Steve, you know, the, the whole work comes in from there. And I believe the way we're going, we'll, we'll, we'll make noise. It's just about letting people know. It's about being in the right place, with the right capacity, the right marketing. And the marketing is not to sell it to people, it's to let them know what they haven't already. It's, it's not to say, oh, we want you to come down here and buy a ticket, no, no. You have to see this. You have to see what's going on because you're going to love this. And a lot of people love the UFC, and the UFC is filling the void, void internationally across the world, but it's not an English show. Japan has shows, America has shows, England doesn't really have a show.
I'm not again undermining or caught, taking away from any of the UK promotion. In my opinion, which I'm entitled to, in my opinion, UK doesn't have a show which is filling the void. That's bringing in the highest level fighters. That's bringing in the, the biggest crowds. It doesn't have that show, and that is ultimately where for, in five years' time we'll smash that. We'll be there before that, but you ask me in five years' time. In five years' time, we'll be in places like the O2 Arena, selling out crowds with the biggest fighters and the best fighters you've ever seen. Not just raw talent, I'm talking about some of the people you'll probably see on the UFC and things like that coming off the back of that and coming into our thing. We will be a force to be recognised with. And yeah. That's, that's as far as uh, I can go with that at the minute, because the rest will be telling. Shouting on the mat, so don't try yeah. like a camera shiner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mainly just watching the fights tonight, I'll be honest. It's really good. Good night. I always and, like to and, the referee. and the referee, yes, of course, of course. I'm mainly just watching the referee. <laughs> yeah, get a shot, Donny, get a shot, yeah, just you have the camera smiling like. like yeah, 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 yeah,
So people can fight on they can grow their career and they know where they're going.